Very often, when talking about asynchronous PHP, people say that PHP is not the right tool for this sort of tasks. We already have Go and Node.js, so just use them instead of PHP. Of course, you are free to use any other languages that are well known for solving asynchronous tasks. But as a developer, you know that sometimes the language itself is not the case. To add one more language to your stack, you need to set up all dependencies, configure the deploy system and the whole ecosystem for this new language. When you already have a working PHP team, it will be much easier to dig into a new library instead of extending the stack with a new language. It's definitely true that PHP was not created to solve asynchronous tasks. Even more, its goal wasn't to be a programming language that can be used to be large complex systems. When it happened, there was no JavaScript and no asynchronous stuff in mind. But now we have completely different PHP. We have frameworks to build large complex applications and PHP is no longer limited with the request-response cycle. We have live streaming, different APIs, integration with other clients, long living console commons and the requirements that our stuff should work very fast. In a traditional synchronous environment, all statements in the program are executed one by one. We start one task and then wait until it finishes. Only then the another task can be started. It's easy to imagine and predict the result of such program. For request-response cycle, this model could work fine, but for more complex tasks, synchronous approach may produce some inconvenience. Let's say that we have integration with three different data sources. We need to collect data from them, process this data and return to our client. In a traditional synchronous environment, we request each source one by one and if the response time for each of them takes from one to three seconds, that means that we have to wait at least three seconds just to collect the data. On the opposite when working asynchronously, we don't waste time waiting for one request to be completed to start the others. We start these requests one by one and then later when they are done, we come back to collect their results. And now we have to wait only for the slowest request instead of waiting for all of them. The main idea here is that calculations are incredibly fast comparing with I.O. That means that while we are waiting for the response from API, database or file system, our CPU does nothing instead of doing something useful. Asynchronous approach uses the idea of non-blocking I.O. We start not blocking operations without waiting for them to be completed. Once something interesting happens, we could react to it. How could we know that something has happened, that the task was finished? The answer is events. This is what we call event-driven architecture. We listen to certain events and when they happen, we react to them. In our case, we deal with PHP, which runs in a single thread. So to be able to create asynchronous programs, we need an events queue. This queue is the heart of any asynchronous application. It is what we call an event loop. When a new event occurs, it is added to a queue. The next time, when the program thread does nothing, it takes the first event from the queue and dispatches an appropriate event handler. When the handler is done, the thread goes back to the queue and takes new events that might have happened while it was busy. And everything happens in an endless loop. At any moment, an asynchronous thread can be in one of two modes. A dispatcher mode and finding out what event it has to process next. And a handler mode and executing an appropriate event handler. But everything except our code runs in parallel. Our event handlers are executed one by one. Asynchronous doesn't mean parallel. The program runs faster because we start multiple non-blocking operations. And we don't need to wait till they will be finished. Instead, we will be notified when something interesting happens. For example, the response will be received, or the file will be written, and then we can react to this event. Now let's talk about PHP. In PHP we don't have native tools to write asynchronous code. We have some low-level stuff, but there are no such high-level abstractions like event loop streams and promises. And that's why such tools as React PHP exist. React PHP is not a framework, it is a set of different components that can be used to write asynchronous PHP. All components are written in pure PHP, you don't need to install any additional extensions. Asynchronous code written in React PHP looks very similar to JavaScript. 
Often the only difference is that in PHP there is no event loop running behind the scenes, so it is our job to explicitly create and run it. For example, here is a very simple JavaScript code. We delay some execution with the setTimeout function. We are going to print hello world here. And the same code in React PHP looks like this. Just remove creation and running of the loop and we get almost the same code we have in JavaScript. To receive the result of an asynchronous process, in React PHP we use the concept of promises. I think that most of us already know about promises from the JavaScript world. Promise is a placeholder for the initially unknown result. We have some task that definitely requires some time to perform. And this task may return some value or may fail. Since this task is executed asynchronously, we immediately don't have access to the return value. Instead we get a placeholder. And then we define that when this placeholder is being replaced by some real value, we can perform some action. That means that promise can be in three distinct states according to the deferred process which has returned this promise. Pending state means the process is still running, fulfilled means the process is done, and rejected means the process has failed. For the consumer, the code looks the following. Promises allow us to write code in a declarative way. We declare that once we get the result, then we perform some action. Method then also accepts two arguments. The first callback is being called when the deferred process is successfully finished. The second one if it fails. We can also chain promises and provide different callbacks to process the results. For example, if the result of the deferred process equals 1, we multiply it by 2 and pass 2 as an argument to the second callback. Again we multiply it by 2 and then print 4. Streams look exactly the same as in JavaScript. They allow us to process large amounts of data by chunks. For example, when we need to process a large log file with a size of several gigabytes, there is no need to load the whole thing into a memory. Instead, we can read this file through the stream, and then we are notified each time a new chunk of data is ready. In case of a log file, it is a readable stream. In case of uploading a file to server and continuously writing on disk, it will be a writable stream. A socket connection, which is both readable and writable, can be presented with a duplex stream. Streams API looks very similar to Node.js. We can write something to the stream or we can listen to certain events. Streams are also event emitters. When something interesting happens inside, the stream can react to it. For example, we can add an event handler to data event. Data event is fired each time the readable stream has a new chunk of data available to read. Or close event is fired when the stream closes. For example, we have read the whole file. These were basic low-level abstractions, the building blocks of any asynchronous code. React PHP ecosystem also offers a lot of different high-level components. They include components for storages, network communication, queues, asynchronous caches and logs, different streams, and so on. As it was said before, the code written in React PHP looks very similar to Node.js. Here is a very simple web server which returns 200 response with the string hello world for all incoming requests. On the left side we have Node.js version and React PHP is on the right. We create a server, open a socket on a specified port, attach a server to the socket and run the loop. A very simple asynchronous web server written in PHP. Again, the only difference with Node.js version is that we have to explicitly create and run an event loop. The rest of the code looks exactly the same. When people say that asynchronous code written in Node.js looks much cleaner than its PHP version, just show them this code. To take advantage of React PHP, there is no need to rewrite your application from scratch. For example, we have some application and in controller we receive data from two different sources. Then we collect this data and render the page. 
we can rewrite only bottleneck part of this code – synchronous HTTP requests. We create an event loop, then send two requests that return promises. Then we wait till these promises resolve, collect data and continue with the synchronous flow. We asynchronously receive the data, but then synchronously render the page. If everything looks so great, maybe we should start writing all applications asynchronously. But with great power comes great responsibility. The most difficult problem is blocking calls. Remember that our code is running in a single thread. That means that any long running task will block the whole loop. Event loop must be continuously running listening to new events and calling handlers for them. When one of the handlers is being executed too long, the rest of the application waits. Unfortunately, most of native functions and third-party libraries were initially written to work in a traditional synchronous runtime, and they block the flow. Any network communication may block the loop. While the request is being executed, we wait. This is the reason why we can't use PDO and all libraries built upon it. PDO uses network requests. Instead, we should use stream-based clients. We can't use all traditional file system functions, like file exist or file get contents. Instead, we should use special asynchronous adapters. Also, when using third-party libraries, it's important to know what functions are used inside, whether they can block the loop or not. In synchronous code, as a replacement for blocking calls, we can use the following rules. When we need to receive some single value, we use promises. When we are working with some API that is continuously pushing or receiving some data, we use streams. When writing a completely asynchronous application, we should be aware of some problems that we can face. People often complain that in PHP we will have memory leaks. First of all, in the latest version we have a really nice garbage collector and memory doesn't leak. And also it is not the problem of PHP. We can face the same memory problems in Node.js. Memory management in long living processes is a developer's responsibility. It is your job as a developer to optimize, reduce and clear memory. In a long running script, your database connections may be closed by timeouts. You need to implement a sort of checks and reconnect if it is required. Pay special attention to your error handling. Traditionally, we have a separate thread for each client. With every new request, we bootstrap the whole application and execute some code. If something fails, it affects only current request. All other connections possibly stay alive. With a synchronous server, when something fails, the whole application crashes and all the clients will be disconnected. Because things happen asynchronously, it is difficult to predict the flow behavior. And of course, no more var dump and die calls. Because with die call, the whole application will stop and all clients or processes will be destroyed. And remember that all clients or processes in the asynchronous application have some shared global state and they share the same memory. So, asynchronous PHP exists and is alive. In cases when you are waiting for some I.O., whether it is network communication or file system and it blocks you, consider using React PHP. A synchronous approach may drastically increase your performance. PHP can be much faster than you used to think about it. There is no need to complicate your stack with another language just to solve some asynchronous task. Possibly PHP can easily handle it. And React PHP can help you with writing asynchronous code. There is no magic involved and no additional extensions required. But don't expect that you just add React PHP to your project and everything starts working two times faster. It doesn't work like this. You should understand the whole concept of asynchronous code in order to get all benefits from it.